And okay, you tried to bring in. Um, okay, before that, you mentioned that uh, by this time a lot of activists and anarchists and the mm -hmm. previous um, different communities within the group had moved away. Mm -hmm. um, was it due to particular reasons, or was it because you know life just happens to them to get mm -hmm. married or something like that? For some people. Life just happens, uh, and a lot of people see uh, all the do-it-yourself activism and uh, all just self-learning as as a period in life, not as a way of life. Which may, I think it's it's a valid way. I, I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the only way. We'll see if 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 I grow up from uh, from uh, community building and. Uh, hacker spaces. Uh, some people uh, got very good offers, job offers uh, overseas or uh, on, in different countries and moved away. Uh, some people just uh, started their own projects outside of hacker space, which took most of their time. Uh, some people uh, said that hacker space projects, if they wanted to do some kind of activism within hacker space, it had uh, the Traction was too big to achieve anything, and th there were uh, it was easier for them to, to work outside. Uh, and uh, and I think it just came. It was naturally this way. And people who uh, who wanted who accepted activism before just without uh, the activists uh, themselves, they wanted to focus on their projects in the first place. Uh, so uh, I don't think there was any kind of important shift in the in the place. It was just uh, the due to the nature of what our basement was. Uh, only the group which was the most comfortable in the basement uh, was was left. All the other people uh, moved to to different places, and this is something I have to keep in mind when building a community, that in a, a heter heterogeneous community you have actually to, in order to uh, to sustain drift, uh, just steady drift of people from all the groups, you have to give each group uh, a proper, uh, proper environment. If you do it too basement-ish, uh, basically, only it's my project. Uh, do it yourself. People will uh, persist. If you make it too open, only activists will persist. If you do it too social, probably mostly anarchists and political activists uh, will stay, and all the other gr groups will be put off. So, creating a hacker space is a fine art, uh, and I th I think that. Only Mitch Altman and Bilal Ghalib uh, mastered the, it so far. Mm. Okay. And, okay, so I'm trying to bring in the uh, DIY bio as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hello. What was the experience like? Uh, so, actually, uh, with the DI yourself bio, we had. Uh, some people at the Warsaw, uh, at the University of Warsaw Faculty of Biology, uh, participating in iGEMS. Uh, iGEMS uh, are just synthetic biology for students. So you have uh, that uh, building blocks of uh, 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 of proteins, and you can use them to create new bacteria. Uh, uh, and we actually had quite uh, a few successes, but people didn't go uh, outside of the university with that knowledge. It was very, uh, acad very academical, very, uh, very closed group. Uh, so, but we had several activists uh, going around, so I tried inviting them. And uh, the idea didn't get too much uh, traction in uh, in the hacker space at first uh, only after uh, only after uh, who, who did it it wasn't Anya it wasn't yes it was when Ella arrived and actually 
she she knew hacker spaces she she knew what to expect uh, and uh, uh, when Ella came she managed to uh, to convince hackers to build several things like centrifuge out of uh, old hard drive and uh, it was actually funny because we had to put it under two IKEA boxes because it could explode at, at any moment uh, so our work safety wasn't that safe uh, but uh, it's uh, it worked for several experiments but uh, hackers weren't uh, very welcoming for uh, setting up any do-it-yourself bio group coming uh, from different places and meeting every week to do something. We didn't have uh, space for that at the time and after moving nobody was really interested in creating such a space uh, in, in any place, uh, in, in any part of the new place because that would require an immense effort to, to build uh, by your lab because you would have to uh, get ventilation, you would have to get uh, uh, temperature, probably build a clean room or something. And this is a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work for not my project. Mm. Mm. So is there um, anyone doing DIY bioing also? Uh, from what I know, uh, there's iGEM. Uh, there is somebody who wanted to uh, create some do-it-yourself bio kits uh, and give them to schools or something. But I'm afraid that Polish law is so complicated that you cannot really do anything without uh, a ministry's uh, agree uh, just agreement from the ministry and uh, uh, a lot of funding. So I think that most of the uh, DI bio like, died, there may be something in one of the squads, but I don't have any idea about that. And when you brought the DIY viral people or the iGEM people mm -hmm. into uh, the hackerspace, um, mm -hmm. how, was there any conflict? Not conflict itself, but uh, when I started bringing biologists, uh, they were mostly female. and. Uh, it wasn't that hacker space was was sexist in itself, but uh, girls were outside of hacker culture, and uh, uh, at least at the time, also hacker space only accepted uh, girls who were already immersed and who who weren't. Uh, uh, Hacker culture isn't as popular among uh, women as it is uh, among men. Like, uh, the geek and nerdy culture of uh, of doing stuff in your basement is all is uh, almost uh, exclusively male uh, around the world, uh, and uh, we had problems uh, just uh, uh, communicating. And after I started bringing more and more uh, girls with uh, biology background or similar backgrounds to space, uh, hackers didn't feel uh, didn't feel right with that. They feel that those are people from outside of the culture. Those are people from outside of uh, of our values, and we do not want to educate them because it is not our job and not the place to educate them. Because this is the place to do your project, and those people they want to talk, not do the projects. Mm. So that was problematic. That was one of the axes of of the conflict that uh, that finally got me out of the hacker space. Mm. So how how, um, how did that sort of attitude exhibit itself towards the uh, women? Mm, usually not uh, in any way, uh, not in any way, uh, uh, not in any direct way. Uh, but there were a lot of comments, uh, a lot. Uh, do you even program? Uh, a lot of uh, uh, just. It's hard for me right now because I have to uh, connect two languages of very conflicted uh, groups and I I cannot use feminist uh, uh, terms because I would have to call hackers uh, outrightly sexist and I, 
couldn't use uh, uh, the terms that are used uh, among hackers because uh, I would have to call all the girls new fags. So Sorry. new fags. Somebody without any knowledge uh, how the community works entering the community. So this is very hard to actually uh, create a line of communication with uh, because hackers were hackers were doing their own jokes, joking about the newbies coming to the space, not knowing any rules, uh, asking not for help in a specific project, but asking to to general questions. And this was not only for women, but that was for any kind of uh, uh, new fresh guys uh, entering the space. Uh, and, uh, and they were making jokes among themselves. Uh, women didn't understand that. Basically, nobody from, uh, uh, from outside of the hacker culture, from, from outside of the basement culture, let's say, understood that and uh, often felt offended or didn't understand what is happening at all. Uh, so there was a conflict. Uh, it, I feel that it would be possible to, to solve that kind of conflict and create a language to communicate and to, to, to name things, but we didn't have time and I didn't have enough trust from the, from the hackers to actually try to do that because at some point they felt threatened. Uh, they felt threatened that I want to change the place that they built and they built for themselves, not for the community. And community as something open for other people wasn't exactly a value because uh, the value was community for people, for like-minded people like us, not a community to convert other people to think like us. And I think that was the biggest axis of uh, of the of the conflict I had with with the hacker space, because uh, in my in my image of hacker space, space for doing your project is only a part of what the hacker space is, and for them this is the main part and most important part. And with no activists working full time to, to just introduce people and teach them, it's very hard to to run anything like that. Right. right. So, are there are there groups in uh, Warsaw for uh, for the women hackers? Mm -hmm. Let's say for the LGBTQ hackers. Mm -hmm. Are there these different groups? Nothing I know for LGBTQ. Uh, there are several groups for craftsmanship for women, but this is uh, craftsmanship, not even makerspace. This is, hey, there is that kind, nice craft, would you like to learn it? Uh, we, have, uh, we have places for girls. I know the, about that and we have a lot of groups promoting women in IT, but uh, they are far from being a hacker space. Uh, those are mostly or either organizing uh, uh, like uh, Geek Girls, Cara, Django Girls or uh, uh, Rails Girls. They are organizing tutorials showing that, hey, something is, something is easy, you can do it. Uh, or like, uh, God, I don't, I don't remember the name, but there's also a, a meetup uh, uh, for uh, girls who want to learn uh, coding and they just meet and uh, share ideas and problems. But uh, there is no persistent space and there is no persistent community. Still everybody is shifting and uh, only that kind of uh, representational organization survive uh, when, they, when their main, main task is promotion, not actually building a community of female programmers, female admins, and so on. At least I don't know that. And at some point I felt that it could be a great op opportunity because if we partner, we can actually get uh, girls who are starting to code and we can uh, teach them that uh, uh, open source is, uh, is a good way to, to build your portfolio, uh, that you can take part in projects, that uh, this is not hard at all. You just need to, to get the right mindset for that. Uh, on the other hand, they could get a lot of people with different backgrounds 
uh, to uh, to come to the hacker space. And I, I thought that getting biologists, getting uh, uh, people with, uh, say, computational neuroscience background, getting people uh, with very different experiences will benefit us all. If we could get anybody actually experienced in the town hall, uh, town hall uh, bureaucracy, or anybody experienced in how the government uh, works inside, we could start building APIs for a lot of really nice things and get a lot of open data out of the uh, city, out of the government, and start partnerships, build really nice tools for, uh, for everyone and tools, uh, tools that would be really fun to build. Uh, but uh, no partnership was possible because we were in very different groups with very different uh, aims. Mm -hmm. And all right, so let's move to uh, the city at large, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been trying to look for, I guess, uh, citizen science groups, mm -hmm. open science in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess there's no such group here at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing if we are talking about Warsaw. Warsaw is a small country. It's uh, very different than the rest of the Poland. So uh, the average salary is a lot higher than in, uh, than in the rest of, of Poland. We are, actually, I think Warsaw is just next to Vienna mm -hmm. when, we, when we compare. And Vienna has very different life standards than uh, just uh, than uh, most of the Poland, uh, and the point is uh, saying uh, open citizen science group in Warsaw usually means citizen science group in Poland, but with uh, some kind of central hub in Warsaw. So uh, we do have several clubs or groups for like-minded people and uh, organizers of off the Picarium conferences are, uh, I think, the most prominent open citizens. Uh, they, don't, uh, they don't work as a group of citizens, uh, of uh, scientists who open all the, all the research, even that uh, I know that they are opening a lot when they can, but they are not working as a group. This is just uh, an annual or biannual conference uh, happening, uh, uh, just gathering people from very different uh, places, uh, from uh, starting from I think uh, mid schools and high schools, uh, from university and uh, recently even uh, science educators and uh, 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 open science uh, advocate uh, advocates uh, from around the world where we share ideas, talk about uh, science and especially open science, uh, about uh, hacker spaces and maker spaces and open science hub around the world. Uh, and uh, we basically, after each meeting, we go to each uh, in separate direction. We keep in net, we, we are keeping network and uh, collaborating, but this is not a group in a strict sense. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, is what, what do you think of the way, or is, is Poland pushing for more open science, or do you think that it's not really happening? Ha, I mean, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, I am not aware of any such initiative in Poland, and from my own personal experience, a lot of science happening in Poland can happen only because uh, somebody hopes that nobody else will know that I don't really do science but really replicate somebody else's things and keep them to myself, but it still publishes. So I am very skeptical about a scientific community in this country and I don't know about any kind of open science in Poland. Uh, you have to be aware of several conflicts because uh, very few Polish scientists working in Poland actually uh, publish in English. Uh, because uh, uh, the biggest Polish uh, national export is actually scientists and well-educated people. Uh, if you only know English, you go to the West or to the Far East. 
and you you don't want to spend uh, uh, spend time uh, in a country where as a PhD candidate you earn less than 600 euro a month this is outrageous this this doesn't allow you peaceful life in the capital let alone let alone doing science and pursuing your own conferences etc uh, so if you can you you go to the west or far east and uh, most people who stay publish only in polish journals and polish journals have very troublesome standards and uh, very low impact factor compared to the to the western journals uh, but they have a lot of points from the ministry so if you want to get the next grant you have to make a choice you either you either publish in open science uh, uh, in open access journal in the west and you get famous and your research actually makes a difference but you don't get any follow-up money and you do not get a grant or you publish in some polish uh, paper in some polish journal that nobody really reads and even if they read they want uh, they won't do anything with that but hey you will get several hundred thousand more for the for your next research so this is the problem most Polish scientists face. Uh, I'm not uh, a PhD student or scientist myself. This is only something I've seen a good couple of times. But I don't think uh, people... I don't think there are many exceptions. Mm. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so not much into the science part, but... So open, oh, not open, sorry, smart cities are kind of all the rage these days across the world. Is, mm -hmm. is uh, Poland trying to do something like that as well? Um, it's troublesome because this is, I would say, a fad. Uh, this is something that, uh, this is a thing. So, you know, mayor of such and such city heard that this is a thing. So, you know, somebody do it. And the mayor creates a conference and hey, you, 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 and you, and you do it, but I, we will not be putting any money to maintain it or to know, I will not create any API because you know that will cost money. And basically, people working in public administration are only people who couldn't escape to the West. So if you actually are looking for a programmer working for public administration, I can bet you money they don't know English and they are not able to use any kind of English documentation for any project. This is very sad, but true for like 75 to 90% of public uh, public uh, uh, employed programs. So uh, we, had, uh, we had several open APIs in different cities, but the philosophy of setting them up is we said uh, somebody set them up one time and usually nobody maintains it we had a great project called Seimomet, same as the polish name for parliament which gave you uh, the exact uh, knowledge how uh, each of the mps voted when and uh, on uh, and how they commented things uh, but uh, somebody at the parliament broke the api nobody fixed it the project is that uh, we had uh, in Krakow we had I think that was open data about the air pollution but somebody uh, sounded an alarm uh, where air pollution is several times over the known we should do something about it so what did the city do close down, down the API you won't be able to read anything from the weather station uh, and uh, we have actually a good NGO to go for any kind of open, okay, not open, scrapable API. Uh, this is called uh, Moje Państwo, uh, and uh, this is also one of the NGOs which works with Code for Poland, uh, and they are trying to get as much data in the open and create as smart city as possible, but due to overwhelming bureaucracy, due to uh, lack of trust in open source, quoting my former professor, 
uh, nobody is really doing that. When uh, when a developer found uh, when one of the hackers found that uh, the previous tickets for uh, the previous ticket cards used in the public tra public uh, uh, transit system in Poland are actually faulty and uh, that you can uh, just use any you can hard, you can code any kind of ticket yourself on the card because they don't have any kind of security implemented properly i think they got 48 hours in jail for that for just going to the public with the information that something is wrong and we officials don't understand open source there was a good initiative uh, at the, we have actually the Ministry of Digitalization and there was a good uh, initiative to create a dig digitalization council consisting of uh, a third of uh, a third of a council consists of uh, government uh, employees and officials uh, a quarter consists of uh, of business people and a uh, uh, sorry a third consists of business people and the third consists of uh, of uh, NGO workers uh, uh, dealing with transparency with public data and it was quite nice but very few of its ideas uh, are actually implemented because uh, at some point things get too political and and whoever has the has the uh, ruling uh, whoever is the ruling party wins with their ideas and nobody uses meritocracy in that kind of ministry actually one of the hackerspace space members was member of the of the council uh, uh Rishik, uh and i will give you a link to his blog afterwards uh, so he has some stories from there uh, and at some point, Warsaw Hackerspace was invited to be a member of a parliamentary group uh, for all for all new bills regarding cybersecurity, transparency, and so on. But since it was uh, after my uh, my own uh, uh, my my leaving of the Hackerspace, uh, they just decided that they do not really want to be an NGO, they prefer to be a club. So uh, the chance to, to, take, to take a voice was ignored and nobody really came to, to the parliamentary meeting and uh, no hacker is actually commenting on the law uh, in Poland. Mm, okay. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, have there been any important developments in Warsaw or in Poland's history that have impacted the hacking scene or the tech scene since the two are related? Mm, from what I know, the hack scene in Poland has less than 20 years uh, because let's assume then when several uh, professors started uh, uh, started local uh, internet uh, 25 years ago yes 25 years ago they started tweaking with uh, with some technology on their own and this was the first hacking i'm not exactly uh, an expert uh, but founding of the Warsaw Hackerspace was one important event. Founding of the Krakow Hackerspace, founding of the Fab Lab in Łódź, of Zakład in Poznań, uh, from from our history, uh, we got actually Google Campus in uh, in Warsaw, which was quite strange uh, because uh, I think everybody expected to go, to go to Berlin instead, because you know there are no serious startups in, in Poland okay I, a lot of startups won't like me for that but if you want to have a startup with worldwide uh, attention you go to Berlin you go to London you don't go to Warsaw uh, even to even to Tallinn in Estonia they have a lot of good ideas what to do with uh, open data with what to do with open systems and they want to promote startups uh, so People were very com confused what is the Google Campus for and uh, I think that uh, one of the more uh, rational voices is actually a 
they didn't come from startups, they came from spin-offs from, from the universities. So uh, I think that Google is actually trying to help uh, uh, people escape from the universities, which are largely stagnant and not doing. We lost our patent for Graphen. Like we had to get, we had it, we had our, our idea before Canada and Israel. Like I think half a year or a year before, and we lost it because of bureaucracy, because they couldn't agree on how to create a spin off with that. So I think that Google came just to save several scientists and just hire them or create a startup with them. Uh, for them not to waste time at, at public universities. But outside of that, uh, we have Geek Girls Carrots. This may be important, even though I don't like the idea of just promoting something and not giving too many follow-ups, uh, not giving a persistent community when, when you can learn programming. Geek Girls Carrots uh, chapters are sprouting all around the world and, and that's quite important. And, and I don't, don't uh, remember anything else. Maybe founding Code for Poland several years ago, but, but uh, I, I don't uh, remember anything else seriously impacting hacking scene in, in Poland. Mm. Okay. All right, maybe something lighter. You've been traveling the world a lot looking at hackerspaces? Uh, yes, I, I wish it was far more because I haven't been to Africa and African hackerspaces yet. Uh, and to the, to the Far East either. But I've been uh, to US, uh, I have saw uh, Omnicommons and Noise Bridge, which are very important to me. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, visit uh, Resistor on the way, sadly. Uh, also, I've seen uh, Hackerspace in... Uh, I, I've seen Makerspace in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, but uh, the most information I uh, uh, I take from uh, Republica in Berlin, which is a conference which also coexists with Global Innovation Gathering. Uh, this is an organization for all the hacker spaces, maker spaces, accelerators, uh, and the innovation hubs uh, from all over the world, especially from the uh, from Africa, from Middle East, uh, from uh, South Asia, uh, without Australia, and from Southern America. Because very few people think about hackers when they think of that. And that is a huge scene, like Open Data Jakarta, it's wow! It's uh, Palestinian guys and uh, Iraqi guys creating uh, hand prostheses, that's wow! Uh, that's really something important. Uh, three guys from Sierra Leone coding a new bank transfer system within three weeks and basically saving the economy and hospitals in the whole country during the Ebola epidemic. That's wow! We have a lot of things happening all over the world and we don't notice that. Because when we think hackers, we think C-Base in Berlin, CCC in general in, in Germany, and we think uh, Noise Bridge, Omnicommons, Resistor, and such spaces. We don't think outside of the White West. And there's a lot. Uh, uh, I don't know a lot of what is happening in, uh, in South Asia, but uh, uh, GitHub was uh, was quite interesting, interesting at least from uh, what Saad said. Uh, there are uh, schools for programmers in different countries in Africa, and uh, in Burkina Faso, they are creating really huge and beautiful educational place, uh, showing how computers look to children who don't understand, who have only pictures of computers. Uh, creating a nationwide map of uh, malaria uh, cases, uh, educating farmers uh, around country. It's wow, we have a lot of interesting things. Uh, 
and I would like to just spread the world, uh, spread the word about uh, hacker spaces and innovation spaces. Basically, all kind of places promoting self education, promoting do it yourself project, and promoting open technology. Because you don't need to finish university course, you don't need to uh, be hired by an international mega corporation in order to create something. And uh, I hope that my own open science uh, will contribute to that as well. I would like to, if only I finish I would, uh, this project before, I would like to go to the Case Communication Congress in Germany and show that, hey, this is far from perfect, but hey, I did a piece of research on something which is uh, socially important, with something which which may make a difference because consumers may know that this works or this doesn't work and this is a piece of real science with no uh, uh, no assumptions uh, at the start but this is citizen science as it should like uh, should look like not only as clicking on on neurons and uh, and galaxy zoo which is important but we can do a lot lot more Mm. We can do a lot more. Okay, uh, last two questions. Mm -hmm. On your website, you describe yourself as uh, a transhumanist? Uh, yes, but uh, after visiting uh, US, especially after reading about Peter Thiel becoming a vampire, I am far less inclined to use the term. Because for me, transhumanism meant people noticing that the changes are uh, accelerating, that the future is coming faster and faster, and each genera generational gap will be far bigger than, than the previous. And uh, my answer is, okay, this is what we see, so what can we do about that? How can we shape that? Let's stand at the front of the wave and shape it the best we can. Because we should be afraid, a lot of people will be hurt, a lot of people will die in the process. When the automatization of, the, of labor will come, there will be huge unemployment, there will be huge chaos out of the self-driving cars. And hey, there is a, there is a real uh, opportunity to change it and to shape it so that the least number of people will be had and so that uh, we the people will have the biggest freedom and the biggest number of opportunities to self-develop afterwards yes uh, okay if we continue doing like like we are with the silicon valley and uh, bay area uh, dictating how the world should develop at least the western world uh, we may end up in cyberpunkish mega mega corporate uh, dystopia, and I am really astonished that most of the transhumanists really do hold that point. That yes, for for technology, for progress, we want to sell our souls. We want to do everything just for progress because we want to see flying cars within our lives. And what? Why is that? I, I consider myself a transhumanist because I see that things are changing faster and faster and we shouldn't make them faster unless we can do something to, to control loss of life, to control uh, loss of human well-being in the way. So that is transhumanist for me and I see that this is not exactly the term that I should use Seeing transhumanists willingly use blood of the young to, to keep themselves younger based on badly understood research that doesn't really say that you should use blood from the... Ah. Yes. So. so, would you consider changing the term now? Probably yes, but there is few... There's few terms that describe it better. Uh, I mean, there is a new growing movement. I like really well 
and uh, it's firstly philosophical and in uh, and just in in the literature li uh, li literature uh, it's solar punk something which comes after cyberpunk uh, some not exactly post cyberpunk because we don't want to get all the cyber and dirty uh, this is small groups of people uh, ecologically uh, and environmentally aware, uh, working in communities, sharing knowledge, sharing knowledge all over the world, but, uh, but working locally within communities. Mm. And w each time I read about solar punk, I, I understand this is a whole philosophical trend about hacker spaces. But those people do not know that term hackerspace. This is exactly about working with technology in community and sharing knowledge all over the world. This is exactly what it is. But but right now this is just some very theoretical musings. So so I don't know if I could if I should use that to describe myself in any way. I don't know if I can describe myself as a hacker not not created anything uh, which which would earn me a name in the in the eyes of the community before, uh, because most my most my achievements were uh, just societal uh, or uh, using not using technology uh, uh, as uh, to achieve that, not using technology to create something new. I was just working to promote knowledge, to to open uh, to open some uh, scientific research and so on. I wasn't really uh, I wasn't really creating things uh, themselves. I don't have any pull requests in uh, in any important projects on, on GitHub or anything like that. So when I have better idea, how should I call myself? I will. I will do that. For now, maybe it's be open source transhumanist not drinking blood. Okay. It's a very good term. Okay, last question. So I, I've been the one asking the questions, mm -hmm. right, guiding it along. But if you were the one asking, mm -hmm. um, what questions would you ask about hacking and tech in Warsaw and Poland? What would you want to know? I would ask it depends really who should I ask, uh, but I think that asking people, would you like to create? Uh, do you think that creating a persisting, uh, a persistent uh, space and community for learning and promoting self education outside of any university is a good idea? And if so how would you implement it? I would like to hear that from different people, from people at the universities, from people at Google, uh, from people in different places, because I am not asking, uh, this, this doesn't mean uh, how to create a fucking startup. We have enough of them. It, this isn't asking how to create a student's group, because they don't end well because in Poland. This isn't... Uh, a question about any kind of company like a PubLab or a Makerspace being able to sustain themselves. Uh, it's about a community and a place uh, persistent for all people, open for all people who only want to share knowledge, share the notion that self-education is important and uh, uh, and really uh, uh, and just learn new things. So I would like to hear answers from people in Warsaw and from people in different places. Do they believe that it is possible to set up such spaces in smaller towns? Do they believe that this should be part of community or cultural center in, in such a small town? If not, well, do, do they think that this should be uh, connected uh, within one huge network or working more chaotically? Uh, how, how, do, how would they like to, to implement it? Because this is something we are lacking 
as a as a culture as a, and as a civilization when you are in school uh, until you end your high school you don't have uh, any place where you can just go and learn you have private schools your uh, your uh, parents pay for you to go uh, you have uh, some kind of clubs that are clubs but we don't have the notion in the culture to hey let's come let's learn something new maybe one teacher in in small town has an idea and wants to uh, take children for a trip to to the forest and uh, tell them about all kinds of trees or something like that but i would like to hear it from different people and i would like to and i would like to hear how important it is to them because with all the political problems, I feel that Poland is focusing more and more on its past. All the all the arguments are uh, on the who was hero and who was traitor, and we aren't thinking about future. We aren't thinking about what can we do to to have a better tomorrow. And this is the transhumanist part. And I think that asking this question openly would be really great for for community, for society at large. Okay. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. Really enlightening. I'll just turn this off.